Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes. This is a 2014 Toyota Highlander. I have here three Gronko Classic Ride 50 car seats. And now it is time for our weekly car seat review. So we're gonna jam these in the Toyota Highlander and see how well they fit. Before we dive right in, I wanna remind you that if you're shopping for a new car or if you're just unsure of how best to insert a child seat in a vehicle, please reach out to a certified child seat inspector or installer. We'll pop some links down there in the title bar section below and get their advice on new cars and how to install them properly in a car because you don't wanna get it wrong. The Highlander is a three row crossover vehicle, which means we get a decent amount of ground clearance. It means the step in height is going to be higher than something like a minivan or a sedan, but it's gonna be lower than a traditional body on frame SUV. So you can see this car seat is just about an easy height for me to insert and remove from the vehicle. You really just have to lift it up and swing it in. You don't have to stoop over to do anything like that in the second row of the Highlander. We should talk about the number of seats before we go too much further. The Highlander comes standard as an eight passenger crossover, much like a Honda Pilot or one of the General Motors Lambda series of SUVs, but our version is the seven passenger version. Seven passenger version is available as a $225 option in most trim levels. However, the XLE is the last trim level you can get an eight passenger model in. So you can't get a limited or a hybrid version of the Highlander with the eight passenger seating. We now have two rearward facing child seats installed. This front seat is all the way back in its track and I had a six foot five passenger sitting comfortably in this seat. So you can see there's very little room between this rearward facing child seat and this front seat back. That could be a problem in an accident. You do want to keep a little bit of a buffer there. Consult your instruction manual on the specific vehicle. Toyota doesn't really give any specific instructions as far as required distance, but I would probably keep it at least an inch or two away from this front seat back just for additional safety. The takeaway from this, however, is that the Highlander has more room in this second row than most three row crossover vehicles. Kia Sorento is a little bit on the small side, so you wouldn't be able to have as large of a person comfortably up front as you could in the Highlander. When compared to a lot of the other competitors in this segment, the Highlander favors second row legroom versus third row legroom, which means you're gonna be more easily able to stick these rearward facing child seats in a Highlander than a number of the other competitors. The driver's seat is adjusted for me at six feet tall, and as you can see, it's about four inches away from the seat back or so. That's because I tend to like to sit in a fairly upright position. This is normally where I would put three car seats across the vehicle, but since we're in a Highlander with the seven seat configuration, I can't do that because the middle row is the only place that you could do that in the Highlander. And one thing to keep in mind is if you do get that eight passenger Highlander model, then the center seat does not have latch anchors. It still has the top tether anchor, but it does not have the latch anchors built into the seat. So you will need to use the lap belt in that eight passenger version. Although Toyota does not advertise this the way Nissan does, you can leave a rearward facing child seat in the middle seat, obviously, without a child in it and move the seat forward so that way you can get access to the third row in the vehicle. Second row seats in the Highlander do move forward and backward as well as recline. That makes it a lot easier to connect this top tether anchor from the outside of the vehicle when you're installing a forward facing child seat. One thing to keep in mind, however, is that Toyota does recommend that the seat be all the way rearward in its track when a child is in the seat. And of course the seat back has to be in its most upright position as well. When you're in a forward facing child seat, it's obvious where the Pathfinder has a sales advantage over the Highlander because you can move this front seat forward to gain access to the rear with a forward facing child seat in that Pathfinder. You just can't do it in the Highlander, however, because the seat back can't collapse enough to make the seat slide forward. So all you could do is slide the seat as far forward as possible and then try and get in and out of the Highlander and this is a much tighter squeeze getting out of that third row in that fashion. In order to accommodate the eighth passenger, Toyota had to make things wider back here in the third row versus the 2013 model. They've done that by altering the suspension design in the 2014 Highlander to make things about three and a half inches wider across this third bench. If you want to know more about that, then go ahead and click on over to our full review on the 2014 Highlander. There'll be a link at the end of this video. What that really means is they've installed a third seat belt right here in the third row. That seat belt comes from the ceiling right over here above this passenger's head. And in order to install a child seat in the back, we do have a top tether anchor for the seat, but no latch anchors, as I said before. Toda tells us that this third row seat must be in its most upright position to accommodate a child seat, but that did result in really having to fiddle with things a great deal in order to get the little ball into the green zone on this child seat, something that I'm sure everyone that's dealt with a child seat is familiar with. Installing this child seat is a little bit tricky and getting a kid back in here into the seat is going to be even trickier, but that's true with all three row crossovers. Even though things have gotten a little bit wider, it's definitely cozy back here in the third row with a child seat next to me. The Highlander doesn't have as much headroom as some of the other entries in this segment. It is more than a Mazda CX-9, but less than something like a Ford Flex or even a Ford Explorer. 
It means my head is touching the ceiling if I sit upright in this chair, and this headrest is hitting me in kind of an odd place in the back. But this seat's reclined, so let me move over to the one on the other side of this child seat, which is in its upright position, so that way we can get the child seat in there. And here it's a little bit more obvious that things are cramped because there's actually more room over there in that 40 portion of this 60-40 folding third row just because of the way the tether anchors are positioned for this child seat. It's really firmly in there as you can see and this seat is definitely a bit more cramped than the other side. Because this seat has to be in its most upright position, my head's severely touching the ceiling right now as well. I could buckle myself up if I absolutely had to, but it will be a little bit tricky. This is obviously not a recommended seating configuration. This could get a little bit dangerous in an accident, but it is possible if you absolutely must do this for a short time, you can put your seatbelt on. One nice thing is this child seat is not on top of my seatbelt buckle, which you do find in a decent number of three row crossovers. It's a long way back to the third row in any three row crossover. And as a driver, I'm normally focused on driving, so my sound's all going towards the windshield, which means it's harder for those three row passengers to hear me. Toyota's done something interesting to solve that, and they're calling it driver easy speak. It's really just a one-way intercom system. The system uses the same microphone right up here in the center console that's normally used for the Bluetooth speakerphone, as well as the voice commands in the Highlander. They pipe that sound through the sound system so the rear passengers can hear the driver a little bit more easily. There's no similar system for the third row passengers to be more easily heard by the driver, but then again, that third row seat is mostly for bad children and my mother-in-law, and I'm not sure I want to hear them. The Highlander is very middle of the pack when it comes to cargo capacity, and that's really obvious right back here behind the third row seats. While it is possible to fit two child seats in this vehicle in a way that we couldn't in many smaller three row crossovers, there isn't as much room back here as something like a Dodge Durango or a Honda Pilot, which does have more cargo room right back here behind the third row seats. That would mean that in some of those other larger alternatives, you could fit a third child seat where we're really limited to just two in the Highlander. And these rear seats are in their most upright position when these two seats are back here, so it will be a little bit less comfortable for those third row passengers to be back here. We can easily recline these third row seats and push our cargo further into the car. This little handle's right back here to help you do that. But as you can see, this third row middle seat seat belt right here is tethered to the ceiling rather than the seat itself. That means if you don't unbuckle it from the seat, you do have this seat belt dangling from the ceiling. Our XLE model does have a power tailgate hatch, which is very convenient. And most models of Highlander also offer a separately opening rear hatch glass, which is very handy. It's easier to put things into the vehicle via that glass rather than opening the whole tailgate. Again, this has been my quick take of the 2014 Toyota Highlander with our new focus on child seats. Be sure and subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and comment on this video. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. You'll also be able to click that full review button down there when our full review of the 2014 Highlander is available in about a day or so. You can also email me. you find those instructions down there. You can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash alexonautos. And of course, always follow all the vehicle instructions in the owner's manual and find a certified child seat installer for assistance if you're unsure of anything.